have your Bible, whatever you use for your Bible, say it out loud. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I do what it tells me to do. And I love my Bible. So I make this as a confession. And I will meditate therein. Both day and night. On a chapter in the morning. And a chapter in the evening. Monday to Friday. And because I do. My life is blessed. It is no more a mess. Now everything I touch. Everything I touch now turns to success. You believe that shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to meditate your word. Not one word from you is void of power as we've sat at your feet already to hear your heart. We open ourselves once again to the operation of the Holy Spirit to move in and out of the aisle to touch every life present. Hide your word in our heart, not in our head, where it will come in one ear and out the other. Hide this word in our heart that we may fulfill it and be it. In Jesus' name, we give you glory. Amen. Look at somebody and give them an air high five. You may be seated. Thank you all for those of you that are online watching. I want to say a special hello to my dad. Uh, he pastors Salvation Temple Church. Uh, he's taking a restful day today. Uh, I still know that he's always watching, and so we love you, sir, and uh, love my mom tremendously as well. So uh, good to be with you. Okay, so uh, I don't have a lot of time. You know, we've got to be out in about 21 minutes. So I'm going to take 31, okay? <laughs> but then I'm going I'm to ask some of the men if you all could stay. And uh, we got to be out by one, so it won't take a lot. We just need to get the stuff on the sidewalk so our setup team can. Uh, but I, I, I got a word in me. I said I got a word in me for you. This message series will change your life. In Luke chapter 12, verse 13 through 21, then one from the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully he thought within himself saying what shall i do since i have no room to store my crops so he said i will do this i will pull down my barns and build greater and there i will store all my crops and my goods and i will say to my soul so you have many goods laid up for many years take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Back in September, I had the opportunity to preach at Salvation Temple Church where my father pastors. It came up in me to preach this message and to call it, don't hide it, divide it, where that came from. I didn't grow up in the streets, but um, someone said to that, that to me once. Uh, and when I preached this message, I knew that this would be an entire message series for us at Faith Family Church. I was the co-owner of a landscape company that we started, and we owned it for about 12 years. Over that period of time, we received hundreds, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue from clients and, and projects. One time, I remember finishing up a job and getting paid, and I was getting into the truck with one of our employees, and after getting paid uh, from the client, he said something to me that I'll never forget. This was LT. Uh, he said, well, don't hide it, divide it. And that indeed is the title of this new message series. Don't hide it, divide it. 
You know how it is when people think you have some money. And when you get some money, <laughs> sometimes you want to hide it. So you don't have people trying to get some of it. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about don't hide it, divide it. This message series is about sowing into the kingdom of God, uh, especially in a time of famine. It's about the laws of sowing and reaping and the kingdom principle of planting seeds and reaping harvests. This series is about giving of your tithes and offerings to God, even when money is tight. Through this series, God is getting us ready for our next level in life. There's some really big things on the horizon for you in the near future. And he's positioning you through this message series so that we can be right in the right place at the right time for when it happens. Amen? So let's begin today with a message that I want to call Two Kinds of People. While I'm preaching this, I want you to identify which kind of person you are. We'll talk today about two kinds of people. Don't hide it, divide it, number one. We're only going to deal really with one verse of this entire passage, and that's Luke chapter 12 and verse 13. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. I want you to imagine, like right in the middle of the message, somebody standing up and saying, Pastor, will you please tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me? That would be awkward, to say the least. That's a personal matter. But Jesus' ministry had become famous. The noise was abroad, and people would gather to him in the multitude. In this particular context, when we read our chapters this week, we'll actually find Jesus was preaching a very profound message, a powerful message about the Holy Ghost. But right in the middle of his message, this guy asks a money question. Why? He's not talking about money. He's not preaching about sowing and reaping. He's not talking about being rich and wealthy in God. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. But right in the middle of his message, this guy asks him a question about money. Why is that? Well, one song in the world says, I got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Have you ever been there where you got your mind on your money and your money on your mind? I think there's another song that says, money, 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 money. <laughs> A lot of times when you listen to this world songs, they sing so much about money. Why? Because where your treasure is, Jesus said there, your heart will be what? Also, so your, your, your money is going to be on your mind at time. But, 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 but what Jesus ultimately points out is that there's two kinds of people. Which one are you? And he points us to being an individual who he describes as rich toward God. Has money ever been a problem or an issue between families? This guy is saying, man, we had a loved one die or our father gave us our inheritance and my brother won't. He's hiding it from me. He's withholding it from me. I would say, have you ever had a family member? <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Has money ever been an issue, though? between families oh absolutely I mean I've watched when a loved one dies how serious of an issue money can be as a pastor I've pastored for many years and 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 I've done home goings I've prayed for people as they've gone to be with their families and time and time it's almost an automatic 
that when somebody dies, somebody between the family is going to have an issue when money comes up. To the point where you'll be like, I don't care what you're talking about, the Holy Ghost. We need to talk about what he is doing. He need to give me what's mine, right? So evidently, his brother was holding back from distributing. In other words, he was withholding. And in the spirit, I can hear the voice of a wife saying, Pastor, tell my husband to divide his money with me. See, I'm looking at the camera now to not put any pressure on people. I, I, I could really, I, if I had time, I would really minister this because in marriages, money issues is one of the number one causes of divorce, so-called causes of divorce, money issues. In marriage, two become one. Is that right? Why then do you have husbands and wives with separate bank accounts? It's not comprehensible to me. When I married Marquita, everything I am, she has. Money is never an issue. My money, her money. We became and are one. But in reality, so many in here and out there don't function the way God intends as it relates to money and in families and especially in marriages. They've got separate bank accounts. He gets his check. She gets her check. He pays certain bills and she pays certain bills. And every now and then, I may need this or he may need that. These things, church, ought not so to be. And why? We're going to deal, obviously not all today, but why do you have separate monies? The answer is because there's two kinds of people. They make independent financial decisions because, after all, it's my money. I want this. I'm buying this. No matter what predicament you think that puts us in, it's my money. Is this too hard and heavy? Essentially, husbands are withholding from wives and wives are withholding from heaven uh, from husbands and Jesus answers the why in this entire passage of scripture so I invite you whether you're in person or whether you're online over the next several weeks don't miss a message because we're going to get down to the heart of it the problem what's the problem here go with me for, the, for today to Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 24. Proverbs 11 and 24 says, there is one who scatters and yet increases more, and there's one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Verse 26 says, the people curse him who withholds grain but blessing will be on the head of him who distributes it verse 28 says he who trusts in riches will fall but the righteous will flourish like the foliage now i really don't have time uh, at all to do this passage justice but let me quickly say this in this passage in Proverbs eleven twenty four, there are described two kind of people. One that scatters or is very generous and the other who withholds and is stingy. You'll see there's one who scatters 
and he increases more, but there's one who withholds. The generous soul is made rich, and the one who waters, he's actually pouring out into others, will himself be poured into. Uh, the people will curse him who withhold their grain. That's what family members do with one another, husbands with wives, wives with husbands, when they withhold what they should. But blessing is on the head of him or her who distributes it. What's your personal disposition about money? Which kind of person are you? Uh, Sister Jenny, come on up here. I want to use you as an illustration. Don't mean to embarrass you. Um, how many of y'all could use an extra $100? Hands all over. Actually, to be honest, how many of y'all could use more than $100? I'm going to use this as an illustration. Good to see you today. Love you so much. Y'all give Sister Jenny a hand clap. She is a uh, member of Faith Family Church. How long have you been here? Last October. Amen. She became a member. And oh, man, week after week, she's seeing things in the word of God she's never seen before. It's been an amazing experience for her and it's blessing her life. We love you, Jenny. Uh, here's a hundred dollars. OK, I want you to hold that up. Right. And I'm going to use you to describe two kinds of people. OK. okay. Now. We've got Jenny. I'm going to function as God, and then we're going to have another person that we'll use um, as an illustration. Now, God gave Jenny $100. How many of you all see that? Okay. Jenny's got $100. Now, whether Jenny realizes it or not, God gave it to her. Now, I want you to imagine each week money comes into your hands, right? Isn't that true? Each week, somebody, somehow, whether it be your boss, whether it be a family member, whether it be from retirement, each week money comes into your hands. Now, if you are smart, you will realize who gave you that. Everything I have comes from God. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 17, the, Bi the Bible says it warns us not to forget that it's not by the might or the power of our hands that we have gotten this wealth. But it is God who gives us power to get wealth. It's not your education, your good looks, your inheritance. Whatever we have comes from God. Right. So no matter who gave it to her from this world system, ultimately this money to Jenny came from God and she should give God glory for it. Yeah. Now, Jenny could be two kinds of people, whether she realizes it or not. She could also think, well, no, I, this is my money. God didn't give me this money. Pastor Stan gave me that money or my job gave me that money or I got this money from this or I got this money from that. Now, watch this in this illustration. Proverbs 11.24 says there's two kind of people. There's one who scatters and yet increases. And there's one who withholds more than they should and it tends to poverty. What should Jenny do with this $100? Somebody say anything she wants to do. No, that's true. But really, what should she do with this money? As a believer... She should give some of it, not all of it, right, back to God. And for giving it to God, you got to give it through the church, organizations that preach the gospel, right? Now, if she gives it to the poor, that's lending to the Lord. The Lord will pay you back. But if you give it to God, the church who's preaching the gospel, other organizations that are preaching the gospel, then something goes into effect, a law of sowing and reaping. Now. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, Now may he who ministers or who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and what? Multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So let's say for the purpose of this illustration that Jenny is not stingy and gives some of it back to God. So she takes a tithe and an offering 
as a seed that God gave her for the purpose of sowing. Oh, y'all got to help me today. This is about to get really good. So she just says, you know, well, this is $100, 10% of that because I'm a tither. I'm going to give 10% back to God. But God is so good to me. This is an extra $100 I wasn't expecting. So I'm going to give God an offering of $10. And so she sows it into the church. All right. What does the church do with it? Amen. They sow it, right? And they use that to get, let's say, Renee saved. Wow, that's awesome. So now watch what happens. Okay. All of a sudden, she sold $20, and look what happens. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Thank you. And running over, come on, good measure, sh pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men, I want to get in on that too, shall men give into your bosom. How many of y'all see this? Now, how many 20s do you have in your hand right now? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten twenties. You started with 100, you sold one, and then 20 started showing up back to you. With the same measure you meet with all, it'll be measured to you again. You can have all of that. God bless you. <laughs> you can have all of that. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. We love you. <laughs> she is blessed. She is blessed. Amen. Now, if I had the time, I only have 10 minutes, but if you all will come back, I will preach more of this, and I'm, I'm going to take every bit of the 10 out. But this is what God wants to teach you, because we don't do this. We don't do it. Every week you get money, you think, from your job from your contracts, from your clients. And you get that money and you spend almost all of it. And if you come to church, if you have something left after the rent, after all, God knows you got to have a roof over your head. After you pay your car note, because after all, if you can't drive, you can't get to work and you got to feed your kids and God understands. And if after you pay your insurance, if after you eat some groceries, because everybody like everybody got to eat. If after you take care of your kids, God understands that your children, they got to eat. You know, God understands that you got bills and, you, you know, and then if you have anything left, you give to God. And it's not right. The Bible in this same passage of Scripture says that if you sow sparingly, You'll reap sparingly, but if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. There's so many of you here and online, you don't tithe your income. You kind of tithe when you come. But so many, not just in faith family or online, but in the body of Christ, very few Christians give tithes, give a tenth of their income to God. And then they wonder why. They're not prospering and increasing, and they're continually struggling, struggling from week to week. God has a system, a law. He has a law of sowing and reaping set in motion. It's like gravity. This is the way the earth is established. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, he said, God said that let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields the fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. Listen, everything you have from God, there is a seed on the inside of it. You can give a horse an apple and he'll eat the entire apple, including the seeds. What am I teaching today? Don't be a horse. Eat the fruit, but take the seed that's on the inside 
of what God gives and plant it in the ground. Give it some time and it'll produce a harvest. I need the next scripture. So Luke said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down. I need the next one. I'm going to go, I'm going to skip past it. So you all know Luke 6 and 38. You all know Luke 6 and 38. So Proverbs 11 and 20. Okay, now I'm lost. Um, okay. So he says there's one who scatters. There's one kind of person who scatters. When the Bible talks about scattering in this verse, he's talking about giving out. Okay? The other kind of person withholds more than they should. Should Jenny, God gave it to her. Now, God doesn't require anything back. But should she, out of her thanksgiving for God, Give back to them, him to help him do what he wants to do. What does he want to do? He wants to get the world saved. And when you give to God, the church where, the, where you put the money or the ministry where you put the money, they preach the gospel and people get saved. And that's what makes God happy. That's what God wants. But listen, we can't use this. Bu- Cyprus doesn't let us use Cyprus ISD. They don't let us use this building for free. It costs thousands of dollars to use this building to preach this gospel. We just bought like $5,000 worth of video equipment in order to get the message actually on the Internet. I mean, the, the, all of this equipment, it costs a lot of money. And it should be that we have our own facility, right? We shouldn't live in a rented house while, you know, they build stadiums and, and, and liquor companies and all the other kind of stuff. God ought to have himself a place where people can come and get life and get God, right? Well, that, that doesn't happen for free. If you want to help God, they, there's a lot that, you, that God wants to do, and you can help him. So if you are a, a scattering person, a person who's generous, then you'll, you'll, you'll honor God. But if you withhold more than you should, then you won't give to God, and it'll tend to poverty, the Bible says. The Bible talks about individuals who are scatterers. Look at what it says in Psalm 1. The scatterer is blessed. Verse one says, uh, the stanza one says, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Stanza nine says he has dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. Notice that word dispersed abroad. He has dispersed abroad. Nope, that's the next verse. Uh, Go back to the first one. So the bottom line is he's saying this righteous man who delights in the word of God gives out. He disperses. He doesn't withhold. Every opportunity he has, he looks to sow seed, to sow seed, right? This verse is actually echoed in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 9. It says, as it will be written, He is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. To prove that this disbursement or scattering is sowing into the kingdom of God in context, 2 Corinthians 9, 9 says he is dispersed abroad. But when you back up to verse 6, verse 6 says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his own heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And when you give, God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have in all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. So when you, like Jenny, sow 20% of your income, let me paint the picture. That is a bountiful seed in comparison when most people give about 2 to 4% maybe of their income annually. You get up to 10, 11%. You're a tither. You start sowing offerings. Now you're giving 20% and living on 80% of your income. Think about what it would be like if you made $100,000 and you gave $20,000 into the church and the work of God so that people can save. That means you're 
living on $80,000 a year. Do you know what's going to happen to you? It won't be year after year at 80. It will come to pass that you go from a salary of 100 to 150. You'll get cars that show up. You'll get houses. Things will break loose. Your children will be. I mean, it just goes. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. And you'll be able to abound. God will make all grace abound towards you. He'll move on people to, to give you stuff, just like it was in Jenny's life. All grace will abound. They were running toward you. They will abound towards you so that you will always have all sufficiency in all things. If you've ever gone to an ATM, and so y'all know that this has happened to me because I'm able to tell you the story. If you've ever gone to the ATM and you typed in to get out a certain amount of money and it kicks out that receipt and says, Oh, I see I ain't the only one. It, it came from somewhere over here. I'm just saying all the rich people sit on this side of the church, but the folks on this side have been there. Come on, y'all been there where it kicked out and it said insufficient funds. When you become, in Proverbs 11, the one who scatters and increases, she started with 100, ended up with 200. Or if you keep holding on, well, I don't understand. I don't know. The Bible said we don't have to talk. You're right. In the New Testament, you're not commanded to, but you get to. And if you do, God is able to do this for you. And you'll get out of living. You'll get past that living from paycheck to paycheck. You'll, you'll come up from being broke all the time. Running in the situation, your, your car's not right and things, and it's just hard for life. And then all of a sudden, you're thinking about money while he's trying to preach about the Holy Ghost. You get mad at your loved ones and want to cuss at them and being right. And in your heart, and you get mad at the rich in this world. Just can't stand. Don't even know why you don't like that lady. Just can't stand her because of how she dressed and what she, come on, somebody. In Luke chapter 7 and verse 4 through 5. When they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that one uh, that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. You could play something softly for me. He loved. Our, think about what kind of position would you have to be in as a lover of God? That when Faith Family Church needs about six or seven million dollars to buy land to build a small church the church won't the, the church that we have in mind won't be large enough for the congregation we see ourselves growing to thousands just like that we're already hundreds but we know the increase is coming because the laws of seed and work it works right but even at six to seven million dollars what kind of position would you have to be in to be able to build a church a building you got to be like way off wealthy. Well, there are individuals in the Bible who did that. This man who needed a miracle in his life, he had already built the church, a synagogue. You could say that he was one who scatters and yet increases. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 through 2, it tells us to cast our bread upon the waters for we will find it after many days. You know, talking about, you know, you got some dough dough back in the day was was money right when when the bible talks about casting your bread it's not talking about throwing a, a loaf of, of of wonder bread out off of galveston into the water and that it's going to come back you throw a, a loaf of, a, of wonder bread out in the galveston it's going to sink to the bottom and the fish are going to eat it up you ain't never going to see that loaf again but the scripture still is true that when you cast when you sow, when you disperse, when you sow, when you give, when you're generous, you will find it after many days. He says in verse 2, give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Uh, in the morning, sow your seed, and the evening do not withhold. Are you all seeing this? There's one who scatters, who sows, and there's another person who withholds. Which one are you? For you do not know which, which will prosper, either this or that, or whether it be of good or, 
or whether both alike will be good. In Mark chapter 4, verse 3 through 5 and 7 through 8, he said, listen, Jesus said, the sower went out to sow and it happened. As he sowed, the sun fell by the wayside and the birds came and ate it. And some fell uh, on the ground, on the stony ground where it didn't have much earth, it sprang it up and it didn't have much depth of earth. And some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no crop. But other seed fell. What am I showing you? I'm painting a picture of a person who's just constantly, essentially, that's the picture of scattering. I mean, he's just putting it everywhere. Some seed fell over here. Some seed fell over there. At every opportunity, they give. They give. Not, but they give what they are able to do. I mean, if you go to breakfast and you get a, a McMuffin and a, and, a, and a hash brown and a coffee, when you get to the job, give somebody that hash brown stop eating everything you get come on somebody stop being stingy have you ever had a friend in life when i mean when they ever had something they break it open and offer it to you even before they give it to themselves some of us have that and god is talking to us about being that about being that my wife and i we want our sons tuition paid for throughout private school and as far as they want to go into college but since we started tapping into the revelation of the laws of seed time and harvest we didn't start a college fund for our boys we started a seed fund and this past week we sold our first seed you know what we did in the preschool not only did we pay our tuition glory to god we pay somebody else's tuition for this month let me guarantee what will happen. Our boys will never want for any education. They will receive scholarships. They will receive grants. They will receive uh, 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 tuitions paid. Uh, they, they, they will never want. They won't have to pay. Oh, come on. Can y'all see that? Why? Because I'm sowing now. You don't have to save for retirement. Sow for retirement. You have to save for a new car. Sow a new car. Woo, I'm excited. I'm like way out of time. There's one who scatters and yet increases. Stand up on your feet. Luke chapter 12. This is just the beginning of the series. I want to invite you back. For those of you on the line, we love you. We thank you for, for hanging in there with us way over time. We only dealt with one verse today. Then one from the crowd said, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. His, his brother was apparently withholding, but what about you? Are you withholding from God? Would people in your life, your spouse, describe you as generous or stingy? I talked about marriages. Why is it that y'all have separate accounts? Stinginess. Covetousness. You're afraid that they're going to take. We got to deal with this. It shouldn't be. Not, not between two that are supposed to be one. Where your treasure is, your heart is there. If he has your heart, you ought to be okay with it. If she, if she has your heart, you ought to be okay with it. And I know this is deep. This is deep, all right? And I'm not, I'm not telling you that between this week and next week, y'all need to merge your account. You need to come here the rest of this, okay? And then decide what kind of person you're going to be. Amen? Most importantly, concerning the kingdom of God, do you hide it? Or do you divide it? Do you give God a piece of the pie? From the accounts of heaven, would God have to describe you as one who sows into his kingdom bountifully or sparingly? How much of your annual income do you divide with your brother Jesus? Now let me warn you, Satan is going to try to, try to steal this word from you. He's going to try to keep you from getting this message. He doesn't want you to come back. He doesn't want you to listen to this again. He doesn't want you to ever hear any more parts of this. So don't miss your opportunity to come up another level in life. Be at every one of these services. Go back and listen to them again. And be sure to read your chapter in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, pray this prayer, and I believe he'll save you right where you stand. Say it out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I do believe that Jesus Christ, that he died for me. I believe you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, 
I make Jesus my Lord. I believe I'm born again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Faith family, we're way out of time, but I have to speak this blessing over you. Raise your hand and may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace. May he turn his face towards you and be gracious unto you. I speak and prophesy the favor of God over your life to be upon you, to be upon your children and your children's children. May the presence of God go before you this week, go behind you this week, go beside you this week be all around you everywhere you go he is with you and he is for you god bless you we'll see you on wednesday night for our wednesday night live service have a great week